This is my 2001 Volkswagen Transporter and today celebrates six years of ownership. I thought we'd do something completely different and add a little bit of a personal customizational touch to the vehicle. So you can see I've done quite a lot of customization to the van already. We've added the wheels, we've designed and rebuilt the interior. It's not flat pack. I rebuilt the engine, we've added an air filter, oil catch can, um, side exhaust. But today, I'm going to modify the wing. I've already gone ahead and made my little VW badge here and this is out of some thin sheet metal but it's only like one mil um, so it's all been done by hand and now we just need to get the wing off so I can bring the wing in here cut the wing up and weld this in and then get it all painted jobs are good one. right so to remove the wing it should be pretty straightforward we just need to remove the front grill remove the bumper and then we can get access to the wing. So there's a few bolts along here. Once we get the wing off, there's a bit of plastic trim there that needs to come off. And there's a couple of bolts behind that. And just in here, we have one bolt there and one bolt in there. Also the lower wing along here will be bonded on, on the inside. I changed these wings, well, I removed the wings to clean up all the crap behind there three years ago. And I actually restuck it down using a Gorilla Glue kind of sealant thing. Uh, so we'll find out now how well that held up. And also, um, the earlier models, short noses, uh, tend to have welded wings and not bolt on like the later models. before I put it back on. Um, well, before I do anything, I'm gonna have to clean everything up, but it just goes to show that, that Gorilla Glue, that grab adhesive has actually worked really well. So I put that on, what was it, three years ago. Um, and it was, well, it wasn't as tough to get off as the OEM stuff, but it was still, as you can see from the video, it was still on there. All right, let's turn this over. Carefully, carefully. Now, everyone keeps on saying that I've got one of the cleanest T4s that they've seen. 
but there is things that you don't notice that don't get picked up on camera it's like big scratches like that that could well i could address them i could sort them out but you know there's other things there's like chips on it and yeah that's why i'm not too worried about doing the modification So you can see it's, um, it's been three years since I took this out and cleaned it all up and it has remained relatively clean. So there's a little bit of build up of muck just here. There was a tiny bit there that fell off there. But that's the only real build up and you can see I don't have any kind of tubes running down. I see a lot of things on the forums, people putting in the tubes as a downpipe and a drain. Um, I haven't done that. I'm not going to do it. but. Yeah, I can understand people's logic of putting in a little pipe because they don't want it to get blocked up. You can quite easily run an airline through it to clear it out. But I'm not going to bother with that. I might get a little bit of gauze or something and put a bit of gauze over that to stop any more debris going down there. But in three years, there's hardly any build-up of debris in there at all. So I don't think I'm really going to worry too much about that. This lip is all nice and... Um, Oh, nice and clean and straight still. No rust on there. Obviously a few years ago I just cleaned it all up because this did have some surface rust on. So I cleaned it all up and just red oxide over it. It is bubbling again, so it could probably do with cleaning up and doing again. Each year it gets slightly thinner. Actually this time I do actually have some uh, professional um, rust treatment so I could actually do some proper rust treatment on it while we're here yeah I think that's what I'm gonna do clean all this up as well but we can do all of the preparations and all that rust treatment before the wing goes back on but we're here today to do this little bit of modification so I'll give you a quick catch up and a bit Bit of an update of how i got to this stage um and i made a little template so there is the um it's hard to see but that's the trace of what i done for the vw badge so i just put it on top of the car over the badge and just used my finger and rubbed it and it gave like a little bit of a dirty line and then i was able to transfer that i just put a piece of paper over it put it up to the window and then just traced it. And then from that tracing, I was able to work out what sizes I needed and how much it needed to be reduced by in size. So we had to reduce it by 25% um, because that was 10 centimeters wide. So it was 100 millimeters um, outside diameter of that circle. So we needed to reduce that to fit in the little gap that I wanted to put this in on the wing. And that's, uh, well, 75 mil is the most that we can go to really uh, for it to look okay um, so that means it's a yeah 25 percent reduction so just had to go through work out what the lettering whips are and everything else and then obviously using the old protractor and all the other bits and pieces that you need uh, i've been able to work out all of the sizes for the whole badge work everything out and downscale it to that size so um, looks the same, they're the same angles, I've got all the angles, worked everything out, everything's been marked, oh you can see all the little marks from working out angles, and a oh, bit of a nightmare, not going to lie, but we've got that done, uh, so now what I'm going to do is, so that's a uh, yeah, 25% reduction, so I'm just going to get a piece of paper, put it over it like that, then up to the window, and then I'll trace that, and then I've got sort of like a, uh, I can keep that for future if I need to make any more. And then on there, I can cut that one out and use that as a template, um, which I can then go outside and make it out of metal. So then using that template, um, everything that I've just shown you, I made this. So this is out of that thin sheet metal that I said, um, 22 gauge, one mil, just under, I don't know, was that 20 gauge, I don't know. I don't know what you Americans use, but yeah, this is just thin sheet body metal work. Um, 
and that's the plan. Yeah. <laughs> Just get into it, innit, I guess. Work out where it needs to go. I'm gonna get rid of all these little slots. Um, those little bits that are behind. So that it is just a clean VW logo. So I don't know if you're gonna be able to see it or how well the camera's gonna pick it up. But I have actually scribed the outer edge, um, some inner edges as well. Uh, yeah, this is the scary bit, isn't it? have gone by I've just checked the footage and um, yeah it looks like you didn't see the first bit and what happened to start off with I put one of those cutting discs from a Dremel into the drill and the cutting disc just shattered so I then decided to get out the uh, the grinder and we cut out as carefully as we could that circle um, I didn't go to full size I left a few little lips here just so that I could sit this on there and work out the actual size so it's now down to size and it all fits nice and flush now so there's not going to be any raised edges all i've got to do now is clean all this paint off where i'm going to be welding i need to clean this up and get rid of that little bit of surface rust on there both sides and then uh, we'll get it all welded in so Day five already of trying to sort out this VW logo. Um, didn't film a great deal yesterday. I was just getting on with things. Uh, and the reason why I didn't really film a great deal was because splatter from the welding, from grinding, I didn't want that getting on the lens, damaging the camera. Um, for me personally, it's just not worth the risk. I've done it on my last one uh, and I'm not doing that again. Um, so it has been a struggle, I've been struggling with this because it has kind of, well I've got it all tacked in, right, so it's all tacked in, um, I flattened it all down with a grinder and it has, unfortunately, it's kind of, um, it has warped a little bit, not a great deal, but it has warped, um, so I think if I was to do this again I'd probably use 2 mil thin metal rather than the 1 mil. It is what it is, and uh, not making excuses or anything. But and the reason why is because I've had to put the welding machine. I've had to put it up to maximum setting, but on the lowest setting of maximum. Absolute nightmare to set up this machine. So I've had to put more heat in it because on the amperage and the low amperage that I wanted to use, it just wasn't doing anything. That the, the um, it wasn't getting hot enough to even melt the thin sheet metal. That the the, the rod wire the weld would just pile up and not even you could just break it off with pliers so absolute nightmare and that's the problem with having that welding machine i've had that machine since i was doing my apprenticeship i think i got it when i was like 18 19 um so over 20 24 years 25 years so i think it's time that i replace that welding machine get something a bit more modern because when i actually done all the welding on the van itself um and I had to redo the arch. That was all done with the welding machine that I borrowed from Russ from Trim Porters. So I reckon I need to get a new welding machine. But where we're at now, anyway, I digressed. <laughs> so I've got it all welded in, all ground up. I just need to uh, go over with some filler. But before I do that, I need to clean up all of that inside, all that old Gorilla Glue stuff. Um, there is some tacks on the inside as well. Put it down carefully. But it's, uh, you know, it is what it is. Like I said earlier, the wing's not totally perfect anyway. There's rust and it's, <laughs> it looks good on the van. People go, oh, your van looks so clean. But yeah, you can't see there's little dents and cut little scratches and then there's stone chips. And yeah, it, it, the paint job on it isn't great. Uh, I don't know. 
But it is what it is. I'm going to get the filler out, start filling it all up. And then uh, paint it and put it back on. We can film some of this now because I'm not welding or grinding. And that's that first coat on. Just give it 10 minutes to dry off. Another coat over it and then uh, start filtering. just saw we've got a couple of layers down now with the base coat um, I've pulled the tape off where we're we going I've pulled the tape away from the edges a little bit I have already previously prepped the area around here so I rubbed it down with some 120 wet and dry um, so yeah so I've peeled it back a little bit so I can just blend in the clear coat but I'm not a body specialist body work specialist or anything like that so um <laughs> any hate and we can't be friends because I've put blood sweat and tears into trying to sort this out and it's been an absolute nightmare but we're getting there we're getting there right so I'm just going to whack on the old uh, some clear coat and then once that's dry we'll um we'll leave it to set and then I'll uh, take it all off and buff it all up it shouldn't take too long to dry so while I'm waiting for the clear coat to dry what I'm going to do is, I'm actually going to put a post on Instagram and I'm going to ask my Instagram followers for them to pick and choose what colour foam filter I should use to go in behind the grill between the wing and the inner wing. So the colours I'm going to ask them to choose between is going to be blue, black, green and white. So we have four colours to pick from to go behind that VW logo and hopefully that will help that logo pop out a little bit. Right, <laughs> so come back next time when you can see what colour they've picked and you can see how the badge has come out and we'll get the wing onto the van. Sorry to do this to you, but it's got to be done. I'll see you next time. Take care, stay safe and God bless.